anonymous, I guess. All right, this first poem, I'm going to take down some sacred cows, but um, it's pop culture, so if you like the people I'm dissing here, substitute the people you hate. If you hate the people I'm praising here, substitute the people you love. And this is dedicated to Jane Rebecca, because we have a shared hate for cat power. <laughs> Can we boo you at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> Deep cut. Thanatopsis. Yes, I know. Another poem about death. This one won't be dressed in last year's black, I promise. You won't have to pull out your moth-eaten suit or wonder whether your navy blue leggings express enough grief. Just so you know, recording artists gotta land a song on the Billboard Top 40 before I mourn their demise. Beyond that academic sadness one feels when anyone dies, Instead of an indie bitch, I'm a basic bitch, a mainstream bitch. I'll choose Kurt Cobain or Amy Winehouse over Elliot Smith or Eva Cassidy. I've wasted too many tears already over dead to young poets or actors or 80s pop singers and 90s grunge gods. And to be honest, I hate Elliot Smith for covering Alleluia by Leonard Cohen, who definitely did not die too young. I think I hate him and the song because everyone tells me I have to like them. <laughs> kind of like the absurd admiration people have for cat power. I want to make these people see the Emperor's new clothes, hit parade, or hear his phony marching band, but I digress. What was I talking about? What am I avoiding through substituting all these pop culture metaphors that will age like the Dublin ditties that penetrate Joyce and will rem render me quaint before my time? I think this poem has already done so. Oh yes, death, that old refrain. I'll just throw in some retro chords or guitar licks at him and call it a day. Mm. Thanks, and according to my notebook, I learned the definition of this word last year, so I'll just define it. I mean, I didn't know it, but you guys might be smarter than me, so you may have done. Um, apotropaism, which is like um, warding off evil, warding off curses. My Bea Arthur votive candle paired with a memorized Golden Girls episode. The green marble harp necklace, missing a chain I bought in Ireland. The remembrance of the love for my grandfather. My husband making a meal without mushrooms. Random tarot cards I picked up along the way. My Smurf collection from childhood. Sitting in a fort of books atop my colorful Mexican rug. Any work of art featuring Audrey Hepburn. Cooking chicken popper kosh on a chilly evening. Dinner with a good friend where we discuss real shit. Putting an old favorite song on repeat until I have perfected the vocal line. Sitting in a theater of some kind entranced by the performance. Lying snug in my fleece daydreaming about past and future sexual encounters. Taking a walk with no place to be and no rush to get anywhere. Sunbathing on a deserted beach with just me and the waves. Writing poetry undisturbed, unperturbed by other successes and my failures, creation. Thank you. Last one. This is short. This might be dated already, too. I've been doing dated stuff lately. My bad. Male hipster review of gay love stories. <laughs> Comfortable with their emotions. All too ready to explain. I'm in touch with my feminine side. Can discourse on Empire Waste and Laura Ashley bed linen. We'll sing along to La Tigre. Hell, even Les Mis if there's time. <laughs> Knows the best restaurants. What wine pairs with what entree. Put two of them in bed together. Just to sleep, mind you. And they will both go. Maybe we shouldn't watch that movie. Yes, God forbid. There, that. Thank you.